if you're upgrading the headlights on your F-150, there's a lot of absolute trash out there and the last thing I want you to do is waste your money. We spent about $12,000 wasting our own money so you don't have to, finding the best aftermarket lights and I think we did a good job. You know who did not do a good job? Lumen. We purchased this, whoops. We purchased this all the way from China and to be honest, the projectors are not only loose, but there was a broken inductor on this one, so I couldn't even perform the test. I think a lot of the reasoning behind that is because they hardly packaged it in anything protective. You hear that? That's the inductor I was talking about. It showed up in this, and honestly, it's not good at all. This is not enough protection when you're traveling all the way across the country or the world. Another headlight I wouldn't recommend to anybody, friends, family, or enemy, is this headlight from Recon. The listing was totally misleading because I thought it was an OE LED headlight. No, it's a halogen headlight, so there's a halogen bulb in here. It's going to burn out. It's no brighter than a flashlight. This is not something you want to spend your money on. Not to mention, it feels really cheap and there's a lot of off-the-shelf parts just kind of mangled together. There's only one projector in here and two optical aligning points which means that this lens is from a headlight that had two projectors in it, not just one. It's just kind of silly, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm saving you guys hundreds or thousands of dollars right now. This one I also would not recommend for your Raptor or your F-150. This is a headlight from a Merrillite. Yeah, it was much cheaper, but it still uses those halogen bulbs. You're gonna have to replace them. The light output was marginally okay. It was still the bottom of the barrel. I would not recommend this for your vehicle. The last one I would not recommend is this, the GTR Lighting Carbide Series headlight. Not because it didn't perform well, it performs very well. Not because it didn't have good features, it's got really cool features, but only because it's simply getting discontinued. I think there's only a few left. This is a great headlight if you want it for your vehicle, but it's discontinued, so we're gonna discontinue this from the shootout. After all of that, it leaves us with these five. The Alpharex Nova headlight, the Alpharex Lux headlight, a headlight from Anzo, and the new Morimoto headlights, a Morimoto XB Evo Hybrid, and the Morimoto XB Evo, and the two stock headlights. I'm not gonna include this one right here. This is the original Morimoto XB. This has been on the market for a while. It's a very good headlight, but I go completely in depth comparing this to the new XB Evo and the XB Hybrids. Now for my favorite part of the shootout. We're gonna install each one of those headlights in the vehicle, one after another, and we're gonna shine it at this wall. We're going to give you guys a round number between zero and 10 for the low beam, the high beam, and then a combined score. We use this multi-point testing method. It's not just the lux at a certain point anymore. We really want it to go in depth and actually compare the usable light output of each headlight. Let's first start with the stock halogen headlight. This is what it looks like on low beam, and as you can see, it's a straight up turd. The low beam is not wide, but it does have a well-defined cutoff and regulated foreground. The width coverage and that distance projection is super weak. Not to mention, when you turn it to high beam, it turns your low beam off, and, and all in all, it's lacking that intensity I really would like. On low beam, it scored a 2.3. On high beam, it scored a 1.3 with the width score of 1.3. So our overall rating for your OEM halogen light is a 2.1. Now, funny enough, that's actually way brighter than anything I discontinued right in the beginning of this video. This is what the OEM HID headlights look like. This is a D3S bulb inside. Funny thing is, this is a brand new HID bulb. Over time, HIDs lose brightness. So if you've had your HID headlights for many years and they haven't burnt out yet, they're much less bright than they used to be right out of the box. The low beam provides this average performance. I think the beam pattern's actually pretty nice looking, but when you switch it to high beam, it didn't even reach the required minimum beam center intensity. But it was comfortably tall and it had a well distribution overall. On low beam, we had a score of 3.3. On high beam, it scored a 2.6, a width score of 2.4, so better than the halogen width score, with an overall rating of 2.7. Your stock halogen was an overall rating of a 2.1, the OEM HID was a 2.7. I'm probably not giving this enough credit because those numbers are actually pretty good when you compare that to a lot of the other headlights we've tested in previous shootouts. This one was actually surprising. This headlight we installed is Anzo. This is what low beam looks like. 
and honestly, it's pretty dang good. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but this headlight definitely performed much better than anything else out here, except for a very few. The low beam has a well-regulated foreground illumination balance with moderately strong distance zone illumination. The width impression is weak, however. The high beam has a very strong distance ground illuminance, thanks to those dedicated high beam optics. The main issue that I saw with the Anzo headlight though is that it only has an H13 connector, so it doesn't work on a truck with OEM HIDs. We had to power this up on a power supply when we were using it on our vehicle. Low beam was a 4.3, high beam it scored a 6.4, and the width score was a 2.3 with an overall rating of 4.5. We then installed the Alpha Rex Nova, and this is what it looks like on the wall. First things first, it didn't score very well. Not really good at all, in my opinion. But it has really cool features and I wanna show you that later on. It's got a useless foreground illumination that kills everything needed for nighttime driving. There's no optical center mark, so we don't even know how to aim this. I honestly don't even know what these optics are trying to do. Nothing about this output actually makes sense. It's wrongly bright at useless parts of the beam. On low beam, it scored a one. On high beam, it scored a one a width score of 0.9, and your overall rating was a 1.0. Now, when you install the Alpha Rex Lux, this is what your low beam looks like. It actually performs better, which is really silly because this headlight has a lot less features and it's cheaper. The low beam wasn't very good, and that light output color is outside of the regulations defined white boundary. The high beam is supposed to be a dedicated optic, which contributes to a pretty good high beam performance. I measured a 1.6 for low beam, a 4.0 for high beam, with a width score of 1.4, giving this an overall rating of 2.9. Now I've got the Morimoto XB Evo Hybrid. This is what it looks like on the wall. The funny thing is those same projectors are used in the Morimoto XB Evo, the more expensive version with a few more features than this. So the numbers are gonna be exactly the same. It's got a super well-balanced, high-performance headlamp. Every parameter is above average with a relatively modest near-field width impression. That high beam is so intense on this headlight, but it doesn't go over the regulations limit. There is an ample amount of light on low beam and high beam with this. On low beam, it scored a 6.9. On high beam, it scored a 6.7 with a width score of 4.8. So the overall score of this DOT compliant headlight is a 6.8. It'd be a 6.8 whether you had the XB Evo Hybrid or the XB Evo. I wanted to hone in on the compliance thing because if you installed that supercharged driver that goes on the back side of this headlight, you're no longer in compliance, but it does drive those projectors a little bit brighter and you get a higher score. Again, both the XB Evo Hybrid and XB Evo have the same numbers because it's got the same projectors. As you can see, we're getting much more light output. On low beam, we got a 9.4. On high beam, we have a distance score of 9.3 with a width score of 6.7. The overall rating of these headlights are now an 8.8. .8. The only difference in light output between the new XB Evo Hybrid and the XB Evo headlight is the auxiliary high beam. That's got those Morimoto one bangers inside of the headlight housing. Again, this is not DOT compliant as well, and you can have these completely disengaged if you don't want this option to then remain in compliance. If you don't care, low beam is at a 9.4, High beam is at a 14.3. Your width score is at a 6.7, giving you an overall rating of 9.3. I get it, it's cheating, but Morimoto decided to go one step further in the high beam, and I'm here for it. I know that was a lot of talking, but I just really wanna be thorough in testing all of these different headlights. We spent a lot of money on it, and we wanna make sure that we cover them to the fullest extent possible. We've done this before. You guys love the video. It sold a lot of headlights that were actually worth installing on your vehicle, and we're hoping to do it again today with newer headlights. Maybe for you, it's not all about light output, as it is for me. A lot of the reason I purchased something is because I think it looks really cool. So now we're gonna talk about features functions, how these headlights actually perform and how they look on your vehicle. You already know what your stock halogen lights look like. 
They're that dingy yellow color and they're in a reflector based housing. This headlight does not have a startup feature. It's got halogen bulbs. These halogen bulbs are going to burn out over time, so you are gonna have to replace them. It also uses the same exact bulb for low beam and high beam. There's no specific low beam, no specific high beam on this headlight. Down below the light output, you're going to see that turn signal. This is an incandescent bulb, which means that it's going to be a slow on, slow off, and it is also going to burn out over time. There's no daytime running light, and there's an incandescent bulb in your side marker as well. Nothing LED in this at all. Your factory HID headlights are a little bit better than your halogen. There's no startup feature to these headlights, so when you turn them on, you're just going to see that HID illumination. There is a bi-xenon projector in here, which means that this HID will do both low beam and high beam. It might look like this bar around the headlight is a daytime running light, but it's not. Now on your stock HID headlights, they still use that incandescent turn signal. So you're still gonna have to replace this small bulb now and again. Now we've got our first aftermarket headlight. This is the Anzo. I was pretty impressed with the light output. I was also pretty impressed with how it looks. Some might say when it's off, it looks a little bit cheap because it looks very plasticky. But when you turn it on, you're gonna notice two LED projectors. That is a step up from having to replace the bulbs. There was no startup sequence with this headlight. And when I installed it, from what I can tell, there is also no bright version daytime running light. It's just the parking light around the outside of the headlight and down below. They do use an LED projector for low beam and a dedicated projector for high beam. The high beam is the projector closest to the center of the vehicle. That entire thing then turns into the turn signal and it is a sequential turn signal. Now we've got that Alpha Rex Lux installed and when you start it up, it looks like this. Yes, this headlight does have a startup feature and it's actually a pretty lengthy startup feature at that. It uses two LED projectors. The outer projectors is low beam and the inner projectors would be that dedicated high beam projector. It does have a true daytime running light, which means that when you're driving around during the day, that daytime running light is gonna get much brighter. The turn signal is not nearly as excessive as the Anzo headlight you just saw. As you can see, it's just those three bars down below. It does have the sequential look though, so it does scroll a little bit. When you install the Alpha Rex Nova, it looks like this. Much more different than their Alpha Rex Lux. It does have that startup feature, as you can see and it's got four, I believe they call them ice cube projectors inside of this headlight housing. All four projectors are on for low beam. For high beam, it only uses, it looks like two of these projectors to perform their high beam. Those are by LED projectors. It is cool, but it is a nightmare to try to adjust these headlights because I really don't know which projector to go off of when I'm aiming. It does have that true daytime running light, just like their Alpha Rex Lux version does, and this is what their turn signal looks like. Now, although the Morimoto XB Evo Hybrid and the XB Evo performed about the same, they look pretty different. This is what your hybrid looks like, and if you do not install that supercharged driver, it does not have a startup. If you install it, it does have a startup and it looks like this. It uses two bi-LED projectors for low beam and high beam, and it does have a daytime running light. Now with the hybrid version, it's only got a white daytime running light. The turn signal is also this standard blank turn signal. It's got this fade off effect that you see here. Now this is the Morimoto XB Evo with those two one bangers down below for high beam. This headlight does have a startup feature and it looks like this. It still uses those two bi LED projectors like the hybrid version does. And it's got a white daytime running light here. However, there's four keys that will come with this headlight that you can change out on the back side of this headlight to either give you that white daytime running light or the amber daytime running light. Those four keys also dictate how your turn signal functions. So you could have that standard blink turn signal that looks like this, or you can have that sequential turn signal that looks like this. Whether you've got a white daytime running light or an amber daytime running light, your turn signal is going to illuminate in an amber color. If you choose to engage those one bangers and they operate as that high beam assist, it looks like this. Both of them will illuminate down at the bottom. There's also more features packed into the XB Evo headlight that is probably hard to see from this shot, and that is this integrated heater. No other headlight out of this entire shootout or the shootout we did in the past has these integrated heaters. When all conditions are right, it's super cold, 
the heaters are going to heat up the internal temperature of the headlight housing, keeping snow and ice buildup from the face of these headlights. And this is the part of the video where I try to give you all the numbers, every tool possible so that you don't waste your money buying aftermarket lights for your F-150 or your Raptor. I hope I did a good job explaining this. Maybe you liked one feature over another. When it comes to outputs, it's really obvious. The Morimoto XB Evo and the XB Hybrid blow all of these out of the water. And quite honestly, all the other 15 09 to 14 headlights we have sitting over here, we didn't include in this video. Out of every single thing that Morimoto has created, off-road pod lights, bulbs, and so on and so forth, this is their best product. And so it's no wonder it did so well in this competition. The only other headlights maybe I could recommend was the Anzo, but that only works for the halogen vehicle and the warranty is not really there. Go to Headlight Revolution right now and see everything else we tested for the 09 to 14 F-150 and the Raptor. If it's on our website, it's worth putting on your vehicle.